hours. And so our speaker will be Fabrizio Bianchi. Is it Bianchi or Bianchi? Bianchi. Bianchi. Um, and he's going to talk about the human states who can to be. Thank you very much. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation this semester. I'm very honored to be here. And uh, actually, I'm very happy that I had a bit of a uh, moment when I entered here since uh, the first time I came to Warsaw so was in 2015 uh, for the review for maybe the first semester of this series. It was in Dynamical System. And I remember that I gave in this room one of my first talks, actually, because I was in the end of my, my PhD. And, uh, and also, I, I met here the person with whom I will then co continue doing my, my postdoc later, David Chalagi. So I'm very happy and grateful to him for, uh, for this series, and I think it will continue. I hope it will, uh, it will continue for many semesters more. So in this course, uh, I'm going to talk about equilibrium states uh, through potential theory. More precisely, I'm going to present the construction for uh, some objects that uh, I will motivate, some invariant measures associated to rational maps or polynomials. Uh, with an approach based on uh, potential theory, which means the theory on, uh, of uh, positive measure or more general positive current, and uh, subharmonic and pure subharmonic functions. Now, the motivation for this approach is to have a method that works in any dimension. We want a method that not only works in dimension one, polynomial rational maps, but works in, uh, for in general in the morphism in any dimension. But for this course, uh, I will just focus on dimension one. So potential theory would be enough. And I think there should not be need for, for positive close currents. We only use measure. So I try really to simplify it at most so just to, to explain the method and the, and the ideas in dimension one. But this is the motivation. So, uh, so all, for all this talk, I will fix, uh, I will consider P1, return the I run, is P1 of C. The complex uh, projective space of dimension one. You can just take uh, C in, instead if you prefer to just not think with rational maps. So F from P1 to P1 will be a rational map. Again, if you prefer, you can just take a polynomial, okay, for uh, what I will say, but it will be more practical for many of the arguments for a compact space here. And uh, for uh, it will be in some sense more uh, intrinsic what I will going to say. So this is the, the object. I will denote by Fn, F, F, n times the iterate, the n iterate. And uh, I notice right away that one of the important pictures of this, uh, of this map, of a rational map, for example, is that they are a cover, a branch cover, a ramified cover of P1 to itself. In particular, to each F, we can associate a degree. That as was already introduced in the previous talk, we can define as the maximum of the degree of numerator, the numerator. But the important point here is that for every point, P1, there exists, uh, let's say, C1, 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 uh, for images. So, F, C, and what's with multiplicity. So, every point is precise in a different image with multiplicity. Okay. And there are critical points, which are the derivative is zero and there are multiplicity. So this is the important feature, okay? Really, really it's important. Of course, the, so we will always suppose that the degree is a fixture for our map. And if the degree is d for, for our map, n will have degree d power n. Okay, so this is just the covering in some sense more and more complete. So as was already introduced in the previous talk, uh, it is uh, now somehow classical to decompose p1 into parts, one is the part set, one is the Julia set. I will not uh, give, the, uh, give the definitions here, also because uh, I will uh, construct in some sense the Julia set by, by an equivalent definition, which is the, the support of a very natural measure. So we don't need now to know actually what it is. Okay, it is just enough to know for now that this is the set of points with some cow, with the cow corpus, whatever it is. Now, I just need this uh, very vague definition. In, in some sense, to say that the orbit here is simple for points. If you know the orbit of a point, you know the orbit of points nearby. And for points here, if you have a small perturbation of the points, you have no idea to what will happen. Even if you understand very well an orbit, once you perturb a bit the point, you lose all the point. Now, so let me give a vague uh, motivation, I'm going to say. Vague, uh, uh, problem. One would like to understand that. 
So the dynamics. For uh, points, uh, dynamics, for example, I mean the optics. So, so this is the bug, uh, bug, bug problem. Okay, as we will see, I mean, this is, as I just said, this is essentially the set where it's not possible to solve this problem. So we don't start very well. But let me give the precise goal, which is what we will try to do in this uh, some lectures. Even if it's not maybe very clear why they are related now, but I will motivate this at least in this lecture. We want to understand, and I will say what it means by this understanding. So is the word understand will be what will be explained in the next minutes. Understand what the so-called transfer operator for uh well per non slovenius operator. I will just call it transfer for, uh, for, for simplicity, which is a tool, and it's defined in this way: you take phi, a function of the one to R. Of some given regularity. For example, you can think it's smooth or older functions, but uh, it will be fixed later or when we need it. And the, the transfer operator is done in this way. You take a function, G, G as a function from P1 to R. We usually call it an observable. It's a function. And you say that this operator here acts on this function here in the following way. You take uh, all the gray images of Y. Okay, you, you take a point to take all the pre images, you replace by the value at all the pre images. Okay, until, until now, this is if I don't put phi. Okay, this is already an, an operator which is well defined. Okay, for every point, I have precisely the pre images. And imagine, for example, the constant function are sent to constant function, they say multiplied by d, because just multiplied by the degree. Now I add the perturbation here. Okay, now given phi. I define this operator here. Now, it's more complicated to study. Notice that this is, this is in some sense a real perturbation of this operator that we may even think is a complex operator, but it's a, so this is the operator that we want to study. Now, I want to motivate why, if we get information on this second, uh, on this tool, on this operator, why we get information here? And why we want to approach this, this question using this tool? And then the goal of this course will be to understand in some sense to study the operator. Now, so, as I said, essentially by definition of the problem that we started with, the Julia set, there is essentially no way to study this problem here deterministically. If you have a point, there is no way to understand the, 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 the full dynamics of, of all points or all objects. So, one can try another approach. So, it's a, it's a probabilistic approach. As follows, instead of to, instead of studying the orbits of a point, precisely a point, uh, all the orbits, you take u from p1 to r, which is an observable. Imagine, for example, a coordinate, okay? The x or the y if you are in c or, uh, or something, any observable, okay? Any function. And then instead of studying the orbit itself, you study, you, you want to understand u of x, for every x, for example, u f of x, you move at Okay? Now, in some sense, along orbits, you want to understand the orbits by means of this observable. Now, again, if this amounts to understand the orbit itself, is the same problem as before. But what we can do is that now you can take new, which is a measure. Open it will be invariant, and then we'll say later more on this, what it means and when we need it. But well, let's take a measure for now. And, one, and now we can study the sequence u compose fj, okay, as a sequence of random variable. Let's say on the space p1 with the measure, the measure. We are given a measure, okay, and we study the sequence of random variables here. Now. Given, given a measure, if, if we understand very well the sequence, for example, if this sequence imagine is very close to be in a sequence of independent and the same distribution random variable, we can say that we understand well the statistical point with respect to this measure, okay? Now, if we can do this for many measures, in some sense, we can say that we understand better and better the dynamics at the beginning of the problem, okay? Of course, there will be some natural measure that we would consider, 
And these will be those that for, we, for which we will study these problems. Now, if I take this for any measure, is a, is a problem which is not much more different than saying, okay, for all orbits in practice. So we have to restrict a bit. So this is why we take this, uh, this not of invariant measure, which is as follows. So since this is the course, let me go maybe a bit, uh, a bit lower at the beginning. Well, maybe even later, but that's this now. So we say that F is invariant or F invariant. If, uh, let's say, for every A, uh, the measure of F minus one A is equal to the measure of A. Okay, but now, if I take a set A, I just say that, let me, let, let, let me do, for example, for simplicity, that everything is invertible uh, you know, on, on the branches here. So it's not related, for example, to critical orbit. It's not very important, but for simplicity. Now, I say that I have D pre-images for this set, okay? What this definition says is that if this is mass M, for example, for my measure, the sum of these objects here has also mass M, okay? I'm not saying that each of them has the same mass. A, a usual an example that one can use, for example, here is that if you have uh, x, x0, with some fn of x0 is equal to x, x0, you can take uh, delta 0, delta, let's say, f of x0, plus, 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 delta fn of x0, you divide by the number, which is uh, n. This now is probability measure. OK, it's invariant, because every time you, you push to the next step. And now, I'm not asking that all the, the pre-images have the same mass, mass, OK? In this case, only one pre-image has all the mass, for example, OK? So we will see later some measures which are more regular from this point of view. But for now, invariant just means this. And this, in some sense, is the main, uh, the easiest possible example of invariant measure, a fixed point, for example, or a, or a periodic order, OK? So these are the these are invariant measures. This, in some sense, corresponds to the idea in dynamics of the idea of physics that mass or whatever is, is not created and is not lost. <laughs> you have uh, some mass here, you go here, and you get the same mass again, and you keep getting the same, OK? It's not a condition forward, but it's a condition like this. All mass you have here, it already existed yesterday. OK, so this is the idea. Now, uh, let's go back to the random variables. If I forget dynamics for one moment, and I say, OK, which are the best possible random variables that, that I can have? Since we want to say we want to understand the sequence as best as possible, which are yes. Can you pick up delta and uh, the n the number of I can see uh, ah sorry, yes. Okay. So I'm taking x naught to be a point such that for some iterate of the map is fixed. You can take n equal one, for example, with a fixed point. Then I take delta x, which is the probability measure that gives mass one to this point and zero everything else. Okay, this is just the it's a it's a direct mass, the mass at a point. Now here I put this, I put also a mass at the image, a mass at the image, and at, at some point I come back because the orbit is periodic. So in, now I put n mass in total. Since usually I don't say it, but every time we, we can normal we want to normalize measure to have mass one, I divide by n in order that in total this mass, this measure is putting one n on the first point, one over n on the second, one over n. In total. If you imagine this mass, the, 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 the system of pushing the mass forward, okay, you have a point, it pushes the mass to the next. Now, this one is important because it, every point goes to the next. But the example here that I wanted to say is that imagine that you have a cycle like this. For example, this point goes here, but it has also other pre images. I'm not saying that, for example, this is mass one, one over three, this one over three, and this and these are mass zero and zero, okay? I'm not saying that all the pre images must have the same mass. Just one in this sense, the one in the cycle. Okay, is only invariant. Again, we will see later examples which are have more regularity on the branches, but for now it is just enough. Okay, I answer. So I was saying here that uh, so we want uh, the model to which to compare the sequence of random variables, and in some sense, if you want to study the best possible example of, uh, I mean, let's say we have to put a limit on what we want to do the best possibility will be that this sequence here was a sequence of independent and in the, in the identically distributed random variables. Now, so the best sequence are, let's say, independent and identically distributed random variables. 
mi ricordo che è identica al distributed. Let's say if you have a sequence xc now of uh, xi of random variable on uh, on your space, uh, I think p1 is something important. If uh, new of uh, the probability xc holds in some interval, uh, recall that this one are from p1 to f, okay? So I have function toward f. So the probability of this is independent of okay. r, okay? So if you take any of them, the probability of that the result is between E and B, A and B is, is the same independent of this. Okay? This means that they have the same distribution. Now, independent. So new that thing means the integral of the pretty much. Yes, it the master is the master the measure of the set of points for which X E psi takes value in the Yes. This is the same distribution. Now, independent, I just mean that, again, the, the, the probability that xi is in, uh, for example, let's say, in, uh, or let me call it a, a some interval, uh, yes, a, and, uh, uh, and xj is in b, is the probability of xi to be in a, and times the probability of xj to be in b. Okay? This is the, 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 the independence. Now, let's go back to the sequence here. Is it possible that they are independent and identically distributed? If this is true, we can stop and finish the course. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this sequence here. No, before saying this, let me say something else. Some properties. Which are kind of motivation. But if you have a sequence of uh, random variables like this, yes. But the definition of independent, don't you also need this property of the product for any yes. state yeah. of variables? Because this is yeah. the two of them. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. And then yeah. they get very bad because very soon it's false. This, this, this property can be done half. So I will, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, sir. Yeah. What is the question and what is the answer? <laughs> <laughs> the precise definition of independence. After I did it, so three, four, five. Uh, because it doesn't fall. I mean, in general, I didn't ask anything on this. Uh, so, no, you're in. That, 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 that's you're in it's uh, a finite. Uh, sorry? Yes, yeah, so this just shows that the pairs are correct. Yes, it's pair, but a priori, I don't think it's not clear, for example, for three or four. It's, uh, I don't see so, anything. So what is the answer then? Is this the definition or this is not? For, uh, uh, so for the correct finite number of deals, for the finite number of deals, we should put uh, all the correlations to correlation that will become, and it will be the product of them. It's, uh, I should put the finite number here, any any finite number. No. No, no, no. Now, if you have a sequence of uh, independent uh, random variable, uh, semi distribution, you have the law of large numbers. This says that if I take x1 plus uh, xn, whatever, and I divide by n. It converges to the, the average that we call the expectation of this one, which is independent of xi. So this is the same for each of them. Okay. It's just uh, again, let me back here. The sum of d divided by n goes to this. And the central limit theorem. Oh, I'm sorry, but let <laughs> me get a few hypotheses before the fake. <laughs> So that, there's a statement there. The law of R says that if you have a sequence of random variables in, in, identically, yes, yes. independent and yeah. the same distribution, but then that then you have this, yes, for almost ever. Yes, 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 yes. Again, um, this is uh, the motivation yeah. bug for uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. all about this. Yes, yes, yes. I will put that statement when we go to the dynamical setting. Oh, said one, but it's uh, this is a uh, take this part until what we write here, one here is the 
back motivation for what we want to do. Yeah. So it's probably for new almost. New or not. Yeah, I could also say what it is, which is the integral yeah. against yeah. new of the given yeah. method. New one. Yes, yes, yes. We, we fix the here new. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is that one, you expect that for most of the orbits, or, or I mean, there are no orbits here, for most of the points in for your uh, probability, you have this one. Okay. You have in the average, you go to the, to the, to the average. Now, in the other one, the central limit theorem, if you take this, now, suppose for simplicity that, uh, now, for example, suppose that this, this one is zero. Okay. Just for, just for simplicity, so this one goes to zero. You can ask in some sense the rate of this convergence here. But if I take this and just divide by square root of n, this one converges again in low, okay? not for to the normal distribution, the Gaussian of some, some sigma. Okay, so if you take this as distribution, in the first rate, like this, go to zero, but there is a way to study to the next level. Okay, this is in the law, not almost. Yes, yes, yes. Now, this one is in law. I will again, I will write the precise definition for the, for the dynamical system. Also, let me say that one could uh, discuss when sigma is zero, when sigma is not zero, but again, I don't want to do it now, I will do it later. But these are the kind of general statement that we would like to prove in setting here. Okay, now the idea is that we would like to know before a measure, an invariant measure, this sequence here of random variable satisfies for almost every point, uh, in, in some sense, so this is the point, this, uh, this one, if it goes to the average, and for example, if uh, it satisfies the central limit theorem. Again, this sequence of random variable, if it goes to the average, and the error is estimated in this one. I could continue and put another list of uh, statistical properties. Zero means what? This one is just So this is centered in zero and of variance sigma sigma squared. How you, how you, how you define it? The variance sigma. sigma. So the point is uh, zero because I fix this to be zero. I mean, if I, if I didn't put this here, I should take out n the average, and this will go. So this is the, the motivation. We want to know if there is this distribution here satisfies this property. Now, the point is uh, uh, this sequence here, okay? If I take this one here with respect to new, uh, so that is the Excel side, but it's uh, a win case. The U composed F and N are identically distributed. With respect to new invariance. Okay. If you take a measure which is invariant, automatically it's essential is a, is a kind of rewriting of this. This sequence here becomes with the same distribution. Okay. You can just write down, I mean, just write the, the idea here that the measure of new composed at n being in some interval. Now, this one is the new of f minus n of u minus one, let's say, of AD. This one, by the invariance, you can kill all the f. This is new of u minus one of AD. OK, and now this is independent on it. So having the invariance of the measure precisely says that the sequence that we want to study have the same distribution, OK? So this is not an issue. At least it makes sense to try and study these properties. Now, on the other hand, precisely because they come from a deterministic system, mm -hmm. There is no way to have the independent. So you can build it. There is no way. On the other hand, we may expect that if the measure is to be built in a certain way as some properties, maybe this one is not zero, but we may expect, for example, that what we may call the correlation, which is the measure, let's say of A intersect S and sin of B minus new A, new B. Okay, this one we may expect that it goes to zero as n goes to zero if they are built in a sufficiently good way. Okay, if, if they are built in a sufficiently good way, I mean, yeah. maybe it's not true for all invariant measure, but we want to, for example, find the class of measures for which we can say, okay, asymptotically the random variable satisfies this, and then we can try to apply some general result about random variables, which are not maybe with the same distribution, which are not independent, but they are what are called weakly dependent or asymptotically without correlation. If this goes to zero, 
and we have, for example, a control here on the speed of this, we can expect that, for example, we can still get the centralization. This is the kind of motivation, okay? So this definition here, this in dynamics, the fact that this one converges to this one is called the remixing. This is the notion of mixing, but we'll go back later when we actually construct these measures. So this is the, again, this is the kind of light motif here. And uh, so what we want to do now is to find some measure, okay, for which we have some hope to prove something like this, okay? This and this, uh, this one, something like this. Okay, so let, let me let me start now to talk about invariant measure more, uh, more precisely and maybe to do some construction of invariant measures, specific in this case here. So an example, so invariant measure. As we said, if I take Z pointing to one, I have uh, the cardinality of uh, F minus one of N of Z is equal to D. Okay, if I count multiplicity. If I take minus N, it's the power N. Okay, this is a, this guy. Now, if I take now Z and I take a delta mass here in Z, okay, I can try and build an invariant measure in the following way. I take this mass here, and then I do what, what is called the pullback of this measure. Instead of, uh, instead of trying to go forward, it will not really work, but I mean, not in the sense we want. I will take all my parameters, and I put, uh, for example, let me call it uh, uh, Z1, Z2, Z3, and I put a delta here, Z3, delta Z2, delta, Okay, I take these three masses and I divide I divide by three. Okay, more generally, I take d minus n, the sum of uh, let's say uh, the sum on the w, which are in f minus n of z, or let me write f minus f n of w is equal to z, and here I count the multiplicity, and I put the delta of w. Okay. Now, you can take this as the definition of what I'm going to write, which is d minus n of fn star delta c. This is the full back operator of measures. You want the definition is the one, okay? You have a mass, you go to the pre-images, is the dual, as we will see, of the push forward on functions. But for now, you just take this, okay? You take a mass here, you pull back this mass, okay? You get d power n delta masses with multiplicity, and you divide by the number. Now, this one, what it is? It's a probability measure. Just this, not invariant, nothing. What you may expect is that now we have a kind of tree like this. So you may expect that if you go in the limit, you may expect maybe I get something to invariant. <coughs> so at each step, let me call uh, this measure here mu z n. Okay? I fix Z, I fix N, I have this probability measure with all these parameters. Now we may, what we have, if I do, uh, beyond measures, I could define F star of new, since I will use this notation at some point, to say that F, F, F star of new on the set A is new of F minus one of A. Okay, given a measure, I can put forward the measure, okay? This is a pullback. I take a pullback measure. This one is a pull forward. Why define this way? Because it will be, it will be natural because invariant measure, this definition just means that F star of new is equal to new as a measure. Okay? This is the definition of new. So if I write now, if I use this operator of these measures, yes. Historical comment. Apparently, well, this said to have said that that's the only thing he believes in, pull forward of measure. Have some amount of hand and then you push it forward. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. It's which is the reason of the invariant measure as uh, nothing is created, nothing is destroyed. This is because this is physical. Yes, let me say that this one, if you want to yes, to make maybe even this comment in the of this, you can put forward measures because you can pull back functions. Pull back of function is always well defined. You take a function and you compose with it. The other operator here, I went very 
Okay, just to define this for this measure, because in order to pull back a measure, you have to be able to push forward the function. What is the push forward the function? Is you replace a value with the sum of the value of the preimage. For this, you need some assumptions. You need that you can integrate on the preimage, for example. In this case, as I said, it's very important that our system is a branch cover at degree g every point. So in this case, also the push forward makes sense of our function. Mm -hmm. So we can it's be back. to say that here you use the same d for all the so yes. Actually, you could use uh, some numbers a priori each for each backward image, the, another number, and this is your way to eat the I will get there in half an hour. I mean, so, maybe, maybe earlier, but yes, 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 definitely. Yeah, but yes, yes, yes. This one, it's not necessary. It could be some number depending on the system. It's a, I was asked to be deductive. Yes, 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 sure, sure, sure. I mean, this, uh, this, I did this on the, this precise construction, okay? What I will try to do in this course is, uh, maybe I will do some things that are a bit less pedantic, but to present a method that uh, will work even with the perturbation, but I will first present it with 5 plus 0 in order to explain the idea. Then we will see, like in lecture three, how to apply also with the weight. In order to, but I want to realize that the case with no weight is extremely clear because otherwise it's difficult to follow the one with weight. In, uh, so here, if I if you wait this definition here, one can say that if I take mu n plus n mu z n plus n, and that is follow, this is equal to mu z n for a bit. Okay, at every step, what I have is step n plus one, I just Push all the masses, they go to the next one. And so this is just uh, by definition of this method. Okay. Now, we may hope that if taking some limit in n of this construction, this goes to some limit, if it exists, we don't know. If there is some limit in the limit, in the, if, the, if it converges up to some sequence, but if there is limit, we get an invariant measure. Now, why I want to say this? Because if it exists, uh, this measure has been construct this for example will have some properties like all the branches will have the same mass it will have we have to expect that it has more properties than the invariant measure possible so in some sense let's see the theorem here let me say to broadly uh, for what i'm saying goes to the new bitch and uh, since the important feature of this uh, is again that uh, I'm doing with dimension one, but I want something that works if I replace my map for endomorphism in any dimension. It's not important here, but I want the same method to work. So let me also put the other names, which is for nice domain. Okay. Then we I didn't mention it at the beginning, but this course and the techniques that I will use in this work, in this, in this, in this talk, are very inspired, especially by the work of Nessie Siboni, and uh, who had, a, I would say, an impressive uh, effect on this field, and uh, he who passed away uh, one, a bit more than one year ago. And so we like also that this, in some sense, is a way to say how much this, his, uh, his techniques and his uh, uh, what he introduced could uh, solve problems in this area. So the theorem here is the following. There exists uh, an invariant measure, probability measure, mu, with support uh, equal to j. Again, I didn't say what is j, the chaotic sector. You could define now the Julia set to be the support of this measure from now on. Okay. So from now on, we don't need whatever normal families. We just say that once we have this measure, you will define the Julia set as the support of this measure. Okay. So we have a probability measure invariant such that for, uh, let me be back here because it's not the point that I want to stress. Let me say for almost every uh, Z in V1. It can be precise, but for now, let me just take almost every, in the sense of the bag, even in the most, most weak possible way. So the limit as n goes to infinity of uh, the measure here, you know, the minus n, n star delta z, 
Conference is continuing. Okay. Now, this is saying that for essentially every point I want to take, okay, not only the limit exists, it's always the same. Okay. Now, I could precise this one. I could put some assumption on F, which are very weak to say that it's true for all points, but it's not the point that I want to stress here. This would be enough for us. So the point is that if I mean, for every point you start, essentially, you take this construction. First, it converges. Okay, you have a measure, one, one limit. And second is independent of the point. This one, we will usually call it the, measure, the green measure or the equilibrium measure for our function. It is the baby example, the first example of the equilibrium state that put in the title. Okay, now let me give some comments about this theorem and uh, why this is important. Now, moreover, The convergence is exponentially fast. Here we start going towards uh, what it wants to be the, the goal of this talk, uh, to not only prove things, but to do it in a, a sufficiently quantitative way in order to get the statistical. <laughs> Let me make some comment that also explain what I mean by the, the is exponentially fast. The convergence is, is we start convergence. Yes, as measured again, continuous functions. Yes, yes, yes. That's the convergence. Like tested again, continuous function. And it's in this sense that we will see that, that it is exponential. So, for example, the speed, the mass, the speed, for example, I mean this that if I take a uh, I may often use this notation, uh, mu zn. For example, I may write mu uh, against g. We say that the integral of mu against g. Okay, g against g. I may write this notation for both part, and we will see later that sometimes. So this minus mu against, let's say, uh, g. Okay, so this is the difference between the, the result that I have. This goes down by, uh, this means up to a constant, which is not important for now. The norm of G, for example, C gamma by theta n for some theta less than n, which depends on, on, uh, on the degree and on gamma. If you want this explicitly, here you can take for every delta less than t uh, up to uh, gamma over So there is an explicit rate. Sorry, what is it? What is this? How many lines are there in your? Well, this one, where well, C is a C to the power n to the power theta to the power n. No, this is the norm. This is the norm. So this is the gamma. So if I take G, which is gamma older, is gamma older? Oh, G is older. Okay, this depends on the older norm. Okay, so it's uniform in some on the space of older function with a given norm, and it is exponential as well. It's not important what is here, but the point is that this one actually is a function, is explicit, depending on the degree of the map. And uh, for every delta, which is less than the number here, here I could take theta, I could take delta, uh, let's say, let's take this one as theta, okay? Let's take this one. Just because you cannot get to the extremal one, you have to be all, it's always a bit. I would like to say that the speed here is precisely this, is not true, really. It's slightly less than this, but any speed like we can at least. Okay, so here just take that when I say exponential speed means if I test again, for example, hold the test, I could take a smooth one, switching, for example, I could take switching here to here in just a degree. The speed is so this different here goes to zero, exponentially faster. Of course, there is a term of norm because it must be linear. And it's exponentially in a term which is controlled explicitly by the degree of the map. This is important. And uh, if you want the, the gamma one, the two. Okay, so this is what I mean by exponential speed. Every time that I say an exponential speed, it means that I fix the norm. And for test bounded in this norm, the speed will be exponentially small, depending on something, usually depending on degree, norm, or whatever. And of course, the norm is here. So this is what every time I mean a speed term is this one, okay? So this is a regular power gamma? Uh, let's say gamma uh, less than two, let's say. Less, less than two, a few situ punch. 
it's up to no, it's two or situ functions. What? Situ. Situ. So you want to say by no more. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, actually, how uh, do you know that Helder just yes, 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 this is Holder, okay. but I mean oh, zero. Yeah, no. uh, because you discuss. I mean, I, I just say that mm -hmm. actually, if I to prove this all, the estimate within the case of two, and then you do interpolation. It's enough for the, the situ case. Yeah. But you want data to be smaller or bigger than the other one? I think this is. So, uh, uh, it depends on the difference. This is bigger. Theta is less than one, so theta, yes, sorry, must be bigger than that because I wrote with the minus. So, yes, it will be almost. Uh, <laughs> Yes, it's, yes, it's not the optimal one. This is the one you really would want. It's a bit worse than this. So the constant in the trivial depends on gamma or and, and on theta. Right? Yes, 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 yes. And the more that the constant becomes the optimal one, the more you expect this one to become. Yes, yes, yes. It's there. Also, here when you say almost every, you mean almost every with respect to the bag. Right? Uh, let, let's take respect to the bag here. Yes, 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 yes. Here you can take the bag. You can make it preciser, and actually, if you want the precise statement here, one, one possible precise statement is that if your map has not, uh, does not have a critical periodic cycle, this is true for every point. An example is the exceptional set. If your exceptional set is false because it's there, if you don't have a critical periodic cycle, it's true for every point. If you have a critical periodic cycle, I must lower the requirement here because some part of the mass will stay there so i cannot get to the optimal i have other estimate and this and the constant here may depend on the point yeah, and the other cycle you said talking about rational maps yes rational map in p1 the same statement also for endomorphism of pk in every dimension but i don't want to talk about this in this term. but really the, the approach behind that i will present is that it it's the same in higher dimensions and this is why you don't want to precise what it means here, because in higher dimension it becomes more complicated to talk about uh, the exceptional case or uh, let's just say for almost every point in the bank. Okay. Excuse me. Yes. Do I do the question? What was the question? Uh, the question. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Would you like to take the break? Uh, let's have the question. Uh, yes. Could you just explain me a bit? So uh, ga ga gamma depends on F, but not on G. Or gamma. No, 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 no. Okay, you fix F, you forget, I mean, it's your system. F gives you a degree. Okay, now independent on this, you fix some gamma, which is the, the test that you are testing. Oh, up to C2, but I mean, some older map, so you don't take only C0, and uh, a bit more. And then once you fix all these numbers, this is true. For every function which is older with respect to gamma, uh, yes, sometimes I say older, but it's up to C2, so it's also one half, one half. It's, uh, and uh, sub to C2, the, this one is true. And then the theta, you fix the theta with this condition, but the constant a priori depends on, uh, the, on the theta and on the point. Okay. But what I'm saying is that for a generic map, if you don't have very specific thing, for example, a critical periodic point, this is true for every point, and the constant is also independent on the point. If you have this uh, strange example, I mean, strange, these uh, critical periodic points, uh, the constant depends on the point in a logarithmic way near these points. So here I should put a constant that diverges logarithmically near, for example, a critical periodic point, for which the estimate for which with this general rate must fail, because you have some mass that always stays in the cycle. If I lower the requirement here, again, again, but in this statement, this is why I get for uh, almost every, so not to have the problem. So you said you make the post, so we can make the post here. Yes, it's post. Okay. Okay, let's make the post.
Sorry. Uh, I just say that Google did one of those days. <laughs> well, it's something more. And uh, so this proof is with potential. I give a proof with potential theory on Thursday, the second lecture. Now, uh, so as I was saying, so F star of measures. So this is the dual of F star like this on functions. Okay. Now, if I take the operator that we had before, L L T, this if you want, you can write as F star of G of E phi times G. Okay, you have G, you multiply by this E power phi, and then you do the push forward. Now, also this, you have a dual operator, and it's this one. Instead of taking, this one, I'm sorry? Yes, it was behind here at the time. So then I put G. And then I put the G it was because I didn't have the value. Yeah. So this is you take G instead of pushing forward directly. Now we said why we want to set this operator of multiplying by this uh, this weight and then pushing forward. If here in this construction, I take it again and I, I take now a function phi from P1 to okay. And now each time is I take this one, here I multiply by P is one. E physically, E physically. Okay, I multiply this. Yeah, I could define a measure new n, new that now depends on z, on phi, and on n. It is defined as follows. You take the sum of uh, on f n of w. Is equal to z. And now, what should I put here? If I iterate now this construction several times. So next time I go here, let's say this one is z, I don't know, 1, 1. This is the one of the pre image of this. This is for put delta z1, 1. I should keep this one, z1, and again put e phi z1, 1. So, and if I write this, this is e phi z1, 1, plus phi of f of z1, 1. Because this is the orbital of this now. So if I write the operator n, this is on w, I can write the p w plus p f of w after p f n minus one of w. Okay, I could consider this operator now. Every time I pull back, every time I put the weight, and now I accumulate the weight along pre orbits. Okay, for every of every one of these demand and pre pre orbit, I'm not normalizing now, so now I just put this measure here. Uh, for every one of these pre images uh, like this, I put all the accumulated weight. Okay, now the question it's true, maybe here it was there are other ways to prove this. It's not very, I mean, the proof I will give, maybe it's not so surprising that, that, that is true. But in this case, we can again ask is it true that if I take this with n goes to infinity? Do I still get something? Does it depend on the point? Do I need some regularity on phi to do it? If phi is constant, is what I said before. Now, for example, take phi, which is uh, smooth. So really, just take the simplest possible case, okay? Phi, which is smooth, but it's not constant, okay? Now you have some accumulated weight on the pre images. And uh, notice that these pre images, uh, now they accumulate all the Julia, okay? Now, if you, we don't need in the construction, but you already know that pre image of every point go around in all the Julia. So all of these pre images, then at some point they are distributed everywhere. So in some sense, they mix all the effect of phi, okay? So it's not that you say this one is this part of phi and this one they stay here. All the pre images actually they become very mixed one with each other. So we can ask, is it true that we get this one uh, going, going, going back? Also, this is a bit less clear than before for another reason. Here I could already know that the, what I have to normalize is this d minus n. Okay, so here in some sense, every time I get a measure, I should divide, let's say, for its from its for its mass. Let's say the mass of this, which I don't know a priori what it is. It must be related to a kind of asymptotic uh, weight here, the mass of this, but it's not clear a priori. So here I should find also what's the good number here that I should be. Maybe it depends on n, depends on z, depends on whatever. Okay. So this now, but again, in this way, at least I have single soft probability measures. Now the theorem that now I'm getting closer to what I want to prove in this uh, in this course here. Maybe theorem. 
that's why it's a lot of names. It's not in the good order. The anchor, the helix. So let's say equal well one. And the font is that this theorem. Let me write in this way. Urban is key. Let's do it. This is the following. There exists a yes, it's K11, but actually we are doing everything in K11. There is not another K, K1, dimension one. So there exists an invariant probability measure. New sky with the support of new file is equal to the Julia set. That means let me let me for now since I have to stay, then I will lower. But let me say that I'm five monster, okay? Then we will improve it. And the max of five minus the mean of five is less than log of the degree. Okay, let me put it assumption. So pi is muta, okay, and the maximum minus the minimum on over p1, let's say, is bounded by the log of the degree. Okay, it says that in some sense, you remember that here we have a d minus n. We are saying that at every step you are not putting a more oscillation than this d that it's what, what we want, we want, and we can hope as a speed without the weight. Okay, so we have a condition like this. We can lower, but let me just state the statement for now, the simplest case, okay, when pi is muta. So it is about that mass going and not be concentrated on one brain. Yes, 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 yes. Because if you start having uh, yes, otherwise there will be too much mass on some uh, particular unit the one with a lot of things. But let me really state the statement that, so I have to say with phi. So phi let's say smooth and with this bounded condition. Okay. Again, I take this word, it's not the optimal, but let's take this one for now. There exists this and there exists lambda positive. A number positive, and there exists the rho from p1 to r continuous function. We can say more about the regularity but later. Start letter. If I define m phi, which is a rho minus one times mu phi, so I take the invariant measure and I divide divide by this continuous function. Okay. What I get is that the limit at those infinity of lambda minus n mu of z phi n is equal to rho of z times m phi. Let's say for uh, again uh, almost all uh, z in the uh, one. Again, these are kind of precise in the same way as before, but we don't care about this in this course, about the exception. So the point is now essentially the point I take. Again, I have this convergence. The measure does not, it depends on the point in the sense that I have this function in front that tells me a coefficient depending on the point, okay? But then the measure itself, uh, in some sense, is independent, okay? The idea is that once you take this measure, you multiply by rho, you get an invariant measure. This is not, in, so the limit a priori is not invariant. What you get, but up to this function here, the limit becomes invariant, and if the one for which we want to try this, and you have this convergence here, independent of z, it depends on phi. So everything here around depends on phi, or depends on phi. Okay, everything depends on phi. If phi is zero, lambda is equal to d. This one becomes the measure that we had before. Rho is equal to a constant. Okay, so this is the case of before. So this is this is what happens now if we perturb the theorem we have before. Uh, yeah. So let's give me think of rho of d times m phi. Sorry. On the right hand side, you have rho of d times m phi. Yeah. So I think d this becomes a number. This is the measure. So I multiply just by this number. It's just the scale. There is this number here. And then this is the same as mu phi. Sorry. The same as mu phi. No, 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 no because I fix d. This becomes the multiple of m phi by a constant. Ah, I see. And this is the invariant measure, but for every point, to divide by r. Okay. Uh, so this one is the is the measure. 
If I do in this way, I may be wrong with some normalization. You will forget. We have invariant with the This one is invariant. It's fixed invariant measure mu part. Mu is invariant. Mu is invariant. Yes, yes, yes. Mu is invariant measure. <clears throat> and uh, you have these equilibrium constraints. Now, moreover, Let's say in five is put there, I'm, I'm taking here. Mu is invariant, but M has prescribed Jacobian. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you want to prescribe. No, I will, I will say it uh, yes. Friday. But it's a good trailer. Yeah. It's a good trailer. So, in some sense, uh, yes, let me say it. So because I still didn't say that that, that one is constant Jacobian. <laughs> So there is this measure here, okay? Is so up to since in, in, in some sense you go to a measure that up to some continuous function is invalid. Okay. Moreover, the important the point here is that uh, the convergence is exponential first. In the same sense as in this one. Okay. Now, of course, theta will have to depend on this lambda, we have to, you take all their functions, okay. The limit between this and this against all their functions goes to zero exponentially with the norm of the function on some speed that depends on the on, on whatever you have, in particular the lambda. Okay. This will be seen, in fact, I will give the proof of this at some point. So it's a, so this is the point. Okay, they exceed everything, and you have the, the convergence exponentially. Now, convergence, I didn't say it before because we stopped, but this exponential speed of convergence is from the point of view of measure of duality, is the idea of mixing. Okay. So it means that the mixing exists and is exponentially fast. So we can expect that for this measure here, the invariant measure, then since they are constructed in there by a method which has a mixing exponential behind, that we have statistical properties. Okay. So these are the measure for which we will study the statistical sample. Okay. Just this. So this is the theorem. I will prove. So as I said, I will prove this one in the second lecture. Okay. With a method which is quite simple, but please introduce it. Then and then I will prove this theorem and the other one I'm going to say just for five equals zero. So I will prove this theorem, which is the same, okay, but with a method that can work even with five. Okay, because the I will first present the first method here that does not work with one once you perturb with five because it's based on complex analysis and they, it does not have to work, but it's simpler in some sense. So to understand the techniques. Then I will prove this one just with five equals zero. Okay, just to explain the method. How to make it true with potential theory. Then in the third lecture, I will prove this theorem, adapting the proof that at that point we already know with five different forms. Maybe we keep smooth, maybe we keep just uh, some simplification, but the idea is that we really would like to get to the same this theorem by the end of the course. Okay. And uh, now I will say one more thing about the statistics. But first, let me make a consequence. So I say that. Let me go back here if you want to the case phi equals zero. The case phi equals zero. If I take the sum of delta x of all x which are periodic of order n. Okay, I take the sum of all periodic points. This is the covering. I know that these are cardinality to power n. There is not a big, uh, big issue. So I divide by one over the n. This is a probability measure. I mean, up to multiplicity, yes, it's a probability measure. Well, it's uh, not a consequence, but with similar mm -hmm. techniques, I mean, if we do the right proof of this, it becomes a consequence, but it depends on the proof. This one actually also goes toward mu. So not only mu describes the distribution of pre images of points from a very precise way, not only dense, but equidistributes, but also the equidistribution of periodic points. Okay. So this is a this come from this is a consequence or related result from this. In this case, we can say that if phi is not zero, again for example with this condition, but it's not uh, is this for all natural maps? This one now uh, yeah yes the equidistribution of, 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 of uh, repelling points. Couples, so I'm not sure. The repelling points. Uh, fighting with this geometric I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I'm only this one. Eh? Phi equals zero, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Which, what are you saying? This one for phi equals zero? Or phi equal minus log f, right? No, no, no. 
Now do I have to Yes, yes, yes. Also, remember that every time God, I'm saying phi is smooth, eh? so it's, uh, there is no singularity in phi. So, but if phi is different from zero, you see the problem I said not depending much on the phi. The problem is like, for say, Kramer point. That there might be plenty of periodic orbits entirely close to Kramer points. Mm -hmm. So they there are a lot of them and they carry only mm -hmm. they are not separate. I can change I can change the topic of lecture three. Eh? Do you believe this or not? Okay, I mean, <laughs> this is the Lubitsch. So, this is Lubitsch in dimension one, and it is a deep so dimension one. Mm -hmm. K larger than one, this is a very deep result of the algebra. In higher dimension, it's not even clear why an endomorphism should have one repelling point. Brian Duval proved that periodic points repelling, but a posteriori it's equivalent to staying repelling or not, equally still due to the measure of maximum energy. So this was a really, really big result. So then the method is that you can build the and if points, uh, the images of one point or mosque or mm -hmm. uh, a lot of points are vectors mm -hmm. are separate. Mm -hmm. But the problem is with periodic that we don't know that maybe there are a lot of periodic orbits are growing in bunches together. Maybe what you want to say is this. Uh, I, I don't know, you will correct me. So, Assuming that we believe this theorem, uh -huh. I'm not saying that we know the speed of this. No, no, I'm not. I'm ah, you're not talking about the speed of convergence. This is, I'm not saying the speed. This, I would say, it's a big question. Can okay. you hear the speed? Okay, we can discuss. Maybe I am. Um... Okay, so here, so if the distribution of pre image is thing, it's quantitative, okay, against the measure of maximal entropy. Quantitative also at the level of speed. Okay, the distribution, second level, speed of convergence. And we will see this is because one can transfer the problem in duality on the transfer operator, push forward of function, find that normal, they get some contraction, and so get some, some estimate. And it's not clear how to translate this in a problem of iteration. Okay, so this we don't have the speed. Uh, no. Okay, let again, let, let, sorry, let me maybe. maybe point out another point of this course that I say usually, maybe we don't we don't focus on all points, uh, this we don't care, but the point is having a method that works for all effort. Okay, this is really a focus. We don't want to put any assumption on hyperbolicity or uh, almost this, I mean, the method must work for all effort, okay? Maybe we, we, we can put some assumptions, simplify, for example, not critical periodic points, but for example, they are outside the Julia set. So we can see that they are not uh, important. But we don't want to put the assumption on the expansion of the system. Okay, this is really, really the point. We don't want to assume some conditional expansion. Yeah. So in particular, here, because once you start putting some conditional electricity, I guess maybe you can get the speed. These things that I said, it's not clear. Maybe we can get for hyperbolistic. But now let's take pi non zero. Okay. But still smooth yeah? and still with this condition. So p log f prime, if there are critical points in the Julia set, does not apply. So you have five difference from zero. In this case, you can ask if I take fn equal x and you take delta x, you take e phi x plus phi fn minus one of x. Okay, you take the periodic points, but you take with these weights now, the, the accumulated weight. Now you divide by lambda n. Okay, you can ask if it goes towards the, the let me write the good one of the two. Yes. I know there is a way to get it because this one could be invariant. So it's new, it's new fine. Now, here, what we know is that there exists a set, let's say, per n included in per n. So a set of periodic points, maybe not all, because we don't know, even the cardinality, such so that if x is in per n prime, of n. Okay, if you take on this subset here, 
And you have this equidistribution. These are purely weaker. We don't even know if it's true for all, or if you have different states that can go in different things. And as we will see, this also comes from, from the method that, uh, that we do. So this also, we, we have not only the distribution of pre images, but also the distribution of periodic points is true in this, in this setting. Okay, I'm not saying for all. I'm not saying uh, I'm not saying for all. Yes, I'm not even sure if it's reasonable to expect it for all. Because in some sense, lambda has been built uh, with pre-images. At some point, I thought that maybe this should be all, but I, I cannot really claim that uh, I would say that the, we should expect this to be all. Maybe we could expect different periodic points going in the, uh, different measures. I don't know. What about the proportion, the asymptotic proportion of uh, per prime inside the pair? Uh, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No. I mean, there are because it's some height. I can imagine that per gram is much smaller. It is in some hyper modest stars. It could be, it could be. It could be. It could be. Almost all chaos. It could be. I mean, it's uh, it could be. So we have no control on it. It's not, uh, it's not controlled. It's, uh, I mean, as soon as you don't get the full part up to the total, it means the exponential is more. So we, we don't have the control here. But see, just the consequence of what we see. We're not focused on this, but I wanted to state that there is also an equidistribution. So these measures here not only reflect the distribution of pre images, but they are also given by an equidistribution of periodic points. Okay, just give so they are related here to the dynamics. Okay, so this is uh, more or less uh, the theorem for which I would like to talk in this course. But uh, I will not only want to do this, uh, but I also would like. Uh, and now comes the transfer operator to precise this convergence and get that in a suitable space, the action of the transfer operator on functions not only is a well understandable or whatever, but there is a step like that. I will say now. Let me say that already this statement here is, is enough to get uh, the, the, the law of large number, let's call it, or the central limit. This, uh, once there is this theorem, it's enough to get the central limit theorem, for, 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 for instance. But now, so let me talk about the approach with equality. So, as we said, if I take G from Q1 to R, continues, let's say. I can define Fn star of delta z, delta at a certain point against g. Again, this is the integral of this function against this measure, okay? Now we have started using duality. This is why I prefer this notation, because it's much easier to move things from one side to the other, you will see. This is uh, the sum, as we said, of delta w, Fnw is equal to c against g, okay? And this is the sum of g. W of W is the For this, uh, I didn't say anything, okay? I'm just rewriting things that you said already. So we can define, as I said, this operator here at the point C. I can define, since I said how to define properly, now I'm doing this. So you put, can put forward the function defined this way. Fn of W is equal to 2 on V of W. Okay, since you can push forward measures, and you believe me, once you can push forward, pull, pull back the delta, you can pull back all the measures. Once you can pull back this, you can push forward. Okay, now, if I write in this notation, I will often do write things like this that Fn star of delta is a against g. This is equal to uh, delta z, Fn star. Okay, because this one here is nothing more than this. Okay, so it means that again, in integration, if you want to think in the change of variable, or it's a push forward, pull back. I, if I pull back a measure here against the test function, it's the same thing that pushing forward the, the, the test function. Okay, this is uh, again, uh, this is, I want to be here. So it means that this operator here acting on measure is dual to the operator here acting on function. So in particular, if I want to study something like this, which is a pullback, an operator which is a pullback on measure, for example, in the theorem that I erased, simple without weight, I could try to approach this one by studying by duality, 
the action by push forward of functions. Okay. So in this case, uh, f and star is uh, L0 in the notation that we said before. Okay, is a transfer operator with phi equals zero. Just this, okay? Is a nothing more than this. So if we say that d minus n f and star delta converts to mu, this is equivalent to say that d minus n f and star g, okay, converges to some fun, some constant that must depend on G. Again, we are without weight, so we know that constant and sent to constant, okay? Constants are invariant. So if by duality, if I prove uh, this convergence here, it's the same than saying, uh, Lisa, if I do this operator forward on function, I go toward a constant. The constant will depend on the on G, and at that point, I can define this uh, to be G. I mean, once I have this, uh, the measure I can define as the operator that takes every function and give the result of this operation here. It's a linear operator. We will see it's in the mass one. So it's a measure. Okay. So mu can be defined in this way. Okay. You take the function by duality, you go towards a constant. The constant that you get is the in, in, integral against your, your measure here. And so you find the measure. This is for every cost, for every C0. Right? Okay. So if you have this, it's another construction by duality. Now, if uh, I do now, so the goal. So I could give, uh, <coughs> maybe we we'll see tomorrow. There is already a proof, there was already a proof uh, of uh, here and the one I wrote here by this duality. So proving the existence of the measure maximal entropy, pushing forward functions. This proof I will maybe give just an idea in the second lecture. The point is that it really relies on the property of subharmonic functions in C. Okay, oh, we will see this. The point is that this operator here is an exercise, it's not difficult to see. That I should further define what is a subharmonic function, but next time, if you take uh, some class of function, let's say, often it preserves this class of function. Subharmonic functions are preserved by this operator here. As soon as I perturb this operator in a real way, I lose the control on the on this harmonic function. If you want to think from a, another point of view, this operator here is very naturally related to the complex structure that you are using. Okay, a complex form, a, some a form or whatever is pulled back. It's uh, it's uh, here. If you have a subharmonic function, it's pushed forward. It's, uh, it's still subharmonic. Okay. Now, if you perturb this with phi, you lose this control. So the, the operator with phi is not related a priori to the structure. So. A proof which uses too much subharmonic functions in some sense alone cannot really be adapted in this case. We will see better after I give the proof, but uh, yes. Does this operator f lower star as a continuous function? Sorry? This operator f lower star, does it prefer continuous functions? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Or it would be phi equal zero, eh? Phi equal zero. Here. Because it's a branch cover. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you've given a point, you can follow the pre images uh, continuously, and they are all, always D. And they are always D. It's an integration on the fiber of D points, and you can imagine the follow. Is that a branch cover, or are you using also the follow No, this one is just, is just the branch cover, just to preserve the continuity. But the point I'm saying is to prove this duality here, and especially to get some speed, uh, in order, when you use some norm, you, for example, a possible norm to use the norm on the Laplace of this function. A norm of Laplace works well if you do this operator here, but very bad if you do this operator here. Okay, so that approach here, I will give a hint in the second lecture, but we, we, I don't want to give the details because it cannot work here. Okay, this is just to say, we could ask why we don't do this, which would be simpler, but it doesn't work. Okay, so now I just say this is the uh, for a phi equals zero. Now you remember that the goal was to study the transfer operator. Now I guess that. Uh, I still didn't say, but I guess almost all of you now are convinced that the D operator here is related to the problem here. Because now, remember that uh, the goal, as I said, was to study the operator. So let me define better. <laughs> so I take now the this operator here, delta z, delta plus sum, f and z. W is equal to Z, P phi W, F minus one of W 
this one. Okay, this is the operator we want to study here. Okay, this one, this is this dimension. Okay, by duality, what it is? I, I take a function and I send to L phi g something that at the point C, let's say, is equal to the sum of F n of W is equal to Z, E phi W. Delta of the uh, sorry, G of the okay. This is so this, this is the transfer operator that we said before. Okay, applied n times. So you have all the accumulation here because if you apply n times, you get this one. Okay. So by duality, in the same way that here, if I pull back a measure, I get the push forward in this way. If I want to study this operator here, the pull back accumulated to the accumulated way here. I can study by duality this operator. Okay? So, if in particular the question here becomes there exists lambda such that lambda minus n, lambda n cg, okay, converges, for example, to a given continuous function rho. And rho will roll up, lambda L, 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 L of rho will be valid. Because at this, at, at this point it will be. Will work like this. Once you have this, by the duality, you have this theorem. Okay, so this will be the approach. So we want a way to study this one. Okay. Now, how do we do it? In some sense, uh, okay, we want to study this uh, this uh, this operator here. But what do we want to get from this operator? So as I said, it's like if we take okay, we take the space of continuous functions. Okay. And there must be an invariant line. Let's take phi equals zero for now. There is an invariant line, which is the constant function, which is preserved by your operator at start. Okay. If you divide by this, really fixed. And all the rest, you exponentially mix exponentially fast. It means that all the rest goes towards this one. Okay. You have the invariant line, and all the rest should go towards this invariant line, the constants. Okay. So if we say f and star g d minus n goes to cg. What does it mean? If I have the space of continuous function, I have this line, okay, which are the constants, okay, generated by one. This is fixed by this operator. If I take any complement here, okay, or what happens in the complement is that I, I go toward the function which, with the constant, which is the integral. This is g, this is cg. This is the integral g. Okay. Now the question is can I estimate this bit here? The idea is that the better I can estimate the speed here, exponentially quick or whatever, the more control I have on the operator. And now, believe me, the more control I have on this operator here, I want to keep this precise in the last lecture because it's more separated. The more control you have here, the more control you have here, the more properties you have for the limit. Now, contraction here, maybe you need to normalize. I'm saying uh, this is what we want. This is what we want. This is saying this is the. This is, no, no, no. I'm operator. This I'm just saying, yes, this is the goal. This is uh, if we can get uh, some contraction or a complement uh, like this, uh, then we have uh, this is a uh, strong control. So you have to get this and maybe other statistical properties. To normalize yes, 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 yes. In particular, here, I, here is just the case with the five words. Uh, so I just put uh, okay. yes, 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 yes. Uh, yes, yeah, I, have to, I will have to normalize by the, this one. This should be replaced to replace that one. So now, what is the best possible scenario that I have to study an operator? So suppose that I have an operator, I call it L because it will be L at the end, so I don't take another letter, from a Banach, so a space here the norm of the to another one. So Banach. Every time I say Banach space, in some sense, I only care about the norm, okay? It's just defined by the, the, the function of the given norm, and I only care about the norm. So, assume. So, a little bit general. Let me give another letter. Let me call it T. Suppose you have a Banach space, you have an operator, and suppose that there exists lambda and isolated eigenvalue. Of multiplicity one. Okay, you take this. Uh, you have the spectrum. You have all possible eigenvalues, all the whatever, all the spectrum. Let's say 
you have one only eigenvalue maximal, okay? So the spectrum, so in particular, there exists B in E tau zero, such that L of B is lambda, okay? You have a line which is preserved. And then assume that there exists R less than lambda, okay? Let's take this one real, so I really put, I take this one like this. So this one is real positive, so I take error smaller than this, such that the spectrum of P, if I remove lambda, is included in the disk zero error. Spectrum, sorry? Sorry, yes, like this again. Sorry. The second one, TV. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Cool, yes, thank you. It's good. You're still there. It's the goal. You're still. I was uh, very good. <laughs> so, suppose that there is error less than, than, than this lambda. You have this. So, if I make a picture, it means that you have uh, uh, the plane, okay? You have the spectrum here in something with a reduced error, and you have lambda, okay? If I have the invariant line, so this is the generated by UD. Which is fixed by the other lambda, and then I take a complement. Okay, some complements, please. Here now, then lambda minus n, the n of g converges to a constant that depends linearly on g times uh, uh, b exponentially. Because every function you can take here, at most now here, the norm of your operator is R. So the iteration of this complement here is bounded by R over G. Okay. So everything that happens here, if you take, for example, a ball here, not one, this goes to not zero, goes to the element corresponding in this invariant line, okay, exponentially fast. In particular, if, C, if G is such that the limit is zero for simplicity, now this P is exponentially fast, okay? Now, this is what we call having a spectral curve. Okay? This I just general, I'm just saying, if you have this, in some sense, every time you want to control precisely the iteration of your operator, it becomes a kind of linear dynamics. It can be technical, it can be maybe, but the idea is that it's always like the constant, the invariant line, plus an exponential small term. Now you can believe, I will give it more, de more details on this at the end, because it's more independent for the, the second week, maybe. But the idea is that once we get this, believe me, that all the statistics is there. It's all the statistics you want to work. Maybe it's technical, maybe it takes every time a bit of work to do it, but in some sense it's done. Now, what's the goal? Once we have this, uh, this one, you may say it's done. I need another definition, which is not a priori implied. Stability. Suppose you have something that not only satisfies this, but it's also true for small, for small perturbation of your operator. What if you have T of T, a family, of, okay? A family of operator, such that this also, for all T, let's say, sufficiently small, okay? Let's say that this one was T equal zero, but you have the same also for the perturbation of this operator, okay? You have a family, Okay, and it's true for all. Of course, uh, lambda will be a lambda t, rt will be dependent on t, vt will depend on t, but uh, they will vary continuously with, uh, with, 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 with t. So now, suppose that uh, you have this one. Okay, so you have a spectral gap for an operator, but the point is that you, and you can perturb the operator, okay, in such a way that you always have the spectral gap which is stable. This is really for one to point out this. You, you, you have these two properties, okay, the stability. In some sense, the second is sometimes more difficult to get than the first. Uh, now, let's go back to the original problem. I don't know how many. This is something that is general fuck. General, uh, I mean. No? Something you do I mean, yes, if you have a, I mean, if, if you have a family, if you have a family which are already bounded with respect to this norm, then yes. 
But in our application, we will want to prove that our family, depending on the parameter, are always bounded with respect to the same norm. The point is that you have to start with a family which is bounded with the same norm. And this is precisely the point of the perturbation with a weight which is not complex. So, yeah, so, so, it's the, so this is really the key here. It's not enough to get this one. You want the same picture by perturbation. Let me give just the idea of why it's important. It is to convince me, even if I will not do today. I don't know how many seconds I have. <laughs> mm. negative. negative number. I will try to say only in this. Okay, just to finish. Why I'm doing this? <laughs> so let I not try. So, so we wanted to study the sequence of random variables. Okay. Now, <laughs> now you compose the Fn. This is the sequence of random variables on P1 mm -hmm. and This mm -hmm. is our sequence. Suppose that we can find P, the Banach space. Such that all the perturbation phi plus phi u, uh, you fix phi as here, you take u again uh, uh, smooth, for example, for t in c smooth, for t smaller. Okay, yeah. one, find the one space. Now, as we say, the, 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 this uh, LP plus, plus U now N of V, this, was, this is equal to FNW, is equal to Z, P of W. And here, what do you have? Here you have phi plus blah, 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 all the part of phi, plus P, blah, 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 all the part with U. Okay? This is just this. I'm using D because now I want the dependence on T. If I use here the weight that depends on T, I just write this way. Here is the part of phi, here is the part depending on me. Now, the idea is if, and I will not talk a bit now, but the, the, the light motif that I will explain at the end, if you have a good control of this operator, okay, if you have a good control in T of these operators, how it depends, in some sense, if this table is analytic, let's say, and it depends uh, so well. Uh, you, you can control the Taylor coefficients of the of this development here. This gives the statistics. It's a machine of uh, general functional analysis. I will maybe talk at it at the end because it's more independent. But believe me for now that if you have something like this, uh, if this one, let's say analytic in uh, C, as operator on the same space, so you have the same norm for, for all, okay? The same space, then, uh, there is a machine I could cite at least 10,000 names, but let me say at least uh, the machine of Nagai. That uh, if you have this one, it gives the statistics. Because I will do a computation at that time. If you want to understand precisely this convergence, it becomes a constant plus is exponentially small term. And now, if you, once you can control the coefficients of this, for example, the second coefficient of the development is the variance in a central limit theorem, as an example. Okay, so once you can understand this precisely the development. You can understand the statistics. Now, if you have something like this, uh, this is the most analytic possible. You can control all the coefficients and you have everything, okay? So at least as a motivation, once you have a spectral gap, it must imply all the rest, okay? So it's, there is no, no statistical property that can be left because if, if all the property that can be coded with this operator here are there. Not, for example, the periodic points, but all the property coming from statistics of pre images, they're all there. Okay, I will do another lecture on this. So this is just for, let me state the, 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 the theorem actually. I want to state that. And it's this one. Well, I could say this, this whole thing is the function or the But again, in the same, in some sense, so let me say, if you have this, if you have this good controller, this gives the statistical properties of you with respect to the phi. So if you take u and phi smooth, for example, the, this theorem gives you the existence, but if you have a good control, this perturbing with u, u is the one here. So u is this one. So the statistic of u, is because it's embedded here in, this, in the family of, of operator, and this gives the statistics. Because if pixel phi is fixed, so in some sense, it's equal zero is L phi, and you get nothing, it's, it's L phi. But then for the perturbation with T, it gives all this, okay? But, and the weight you put here, so there is this interplay of a weight that actually is the observable that you had before. So one of the goal actually of this thing is to have something very symmetric in the function, in the weight, you would like the same norm actually that control everything. 
So you don't have the problem, say, which space. Now, the theorem. Okay. So there exists a bar space B such that, let's say, for every zero gamma less than two ones, there exists a norm in particular such that your norm is less than the older norm. So everything I say is true for all older maps, okay, all the functions. And uh, it bounds C0. So it's in, it's in the space of continuous functions. Okay, so I have a norm such that if uh, the norm of phi is bounded in this norm, for example, again, we can take the order, then L phi from E to E has a spectral gap. Spectral gap. And if U now is bounded to the same norm, which again, all older is defined for all older, for example, then L P plus T U for T small, let's say, uh, has the same property, so stability. So you see, once you have, this, you have the spectral gap here, and the same norm with respect to the same space. Is important the same space. You also have the spectral gap for all the perturbations here. So there is no infinity on the left side. This is not no, sorry, this, this is the norm. No, no, sorry. This is so now P and U play really the same role, they weight and observable. If they are bounded in this norm, that I will detail this in section in uh, lecture three. Okay, after I've done all the method just for five equals zero, lecture three, I will do the explanation of this. Uh this one does uh, I mean this you have the spectral gap. Again, this is for every F. I mean, you have no, no hyperbolicity or the dimension one. Now, I don't write it, but once you have this, uh, you can apply the machine, you have all the statistics. So it's then, at that point. Isn't it? Okay, so here I stop. And as I said, second time, I will do all this, but just with five equals zero, just to explain the method, which really simplifies. I will just point out which are the points that will become more difficult. In the third lecture, I will explain once we know the method with phi equals zero, how to adapt with phi different from zero. Maybe I will stay with smooth, maybe I will not do a the final part, but it's a and this is what I want. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know how much this uh, largest eigenvalue uh, depends on the Banach space? If you, uh... it depends. It depends. I mean, so if in some sense, uh, as I said for uh, the phi equals zero, the gap is this theta that depending like uh, v power gamma over two. Here, here it's similar. If my norm tends to the older in some sense, uh, because. This can depend on a lot of parameters, but suppose that I can make it 10 to the order, then my gap, the n phi tends to zero, to the constant, then all the estimates tend to the one of that I had with phi equals zero. So if phi is smooth uh, sufficiently flat, and uh, I can take the, you know, the norm, which is essentially almost older, and the gap is almost uh, what I had with phi equals zero. So yes, it depends on everything, and all the estimate goes to the one of phi equals zero as a Phi goes to zero and, uh, and gamma goes to, and the norm goes to older. The gap depends on, uh, on gamma, yes. I mean, the point is that the norm is not an older norm. And this is really the point uh, because it's quite easy to see that if the map is not hyperbolic, <laughs> there is no way to preserve an older map. An, an older map okay? If even if you have a smooth function, you apply F, if you have a critical point, uh, a smooth function becomes older, maybe become one over two older, something like this. If you apply again, if you have a critical point that kept recurring, the function become more less and less older. There is a the problem. There is no way to get the spectral gap on older norm if it's not hyperbolic in some sense or with some hyperbolicity. So here we really want something without using hyperbolicity. So the norm will not be the older. There will be another weaker norm. And maybe the important thing that I want to put here, and it's very important, is that this norm depends on it. On it. 
we don't we will see in section three in uh, lecture three even in section two we don't look for a regularity like all or whatever but it's a, something that depends on the function it's really i think the main idea here to, to have something that if in some sense if f is very singular f has a lot of recurrence the normal will take this into account the normal will be very weak the more f is regular the normal will be the more and more stronger towards the older norm. so this is really the point it's uh, the norm depend on f Remember, eigenvalues don't depend on norms, so we will continue the part of the spectrum. Ah, yes, 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 yes. This is the second thing. This part here is there. I'm just talking about norm. Yes, yes, yes. If you uh -huh. take better experience, maybe you are not know how to get the values. Yes, yes, yes. yes. The and in some sense, given F, I have a bound on how regular the norm can be. If f is very singular in the sense of critical points, uh, this norm here that depends on f will be weaker. And so if you take stock count, I cannot get to the older. Yeah. To say that eigenvalues do not depend on norm. Ah, this, yes. I mean, the, 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 the main one, yes, yes, yes. The lambda. Lambda is here because lambda comes from here. It's not, doesn't depend on the eigenvalue. They don't depend on norm. Yes, yes, yes. The same. Uh, Parts of continuous. <laughs> yes, uh, Can we be only a normal vector space on the camera? Sorry, can we be a normal vector space? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean. We find the Banach, but all the norm that all the estimate that we do, we need some compactness. So, but it's a, it's a, because uh, all the estimate that we do, in some sense, we, re we really need some compact space to start doing uh, something and hope that you have something uniform. So, no, no, it will be a Banach. Here, there has to be a Banach for this. And for the... <laughs> uh, if you have to stop, but... I'm going to do the last year, the next time. All right. Well, let's thank this big